Donald Trump has a new primary challenger. He already has Bill Weld running against him, so that's one. This second one is kind of hilarious. It's a guy by the name of Joe Walsh, a former Tea Party congressman. Um, and this is, this is ridiculous for a number of reasons. But what I'm going to do here is show you, you know, a significant chunk of his, the launch of his campaign here. And then we'll come back and discuss why this is so silly. I'm going to run for president, and, and I'm happy to be on your show announcing my candidacy. George, no surprise, we've got a guy in the White House who's unfit, completely unfit, uh, to be president. And it stuns me that nobody stepped up, nobody in the Republican Party stepped up, because I'll tell you what, George, everybody believes in the Republican Party, everybody believes that he's unfit. He lies every time he opens his mouth. You, you say that. You say everybody believes he's unfit, but one of the things the White House points to and the president points to often is just about every poll shows more than 80 percent support for the president among Republicans. They don't have an alternative. I'll tell you what, George, and look, I'm running because he's unfit. Somebody needs to step up and there needs to be an alternative. The country is sick of this guy's tantrum. He's he's a child. Again, the litany, he lies every time he opens his mouth. Look at what's happened this week. He is, the President of the United States is tweeting us into a recession. I can tell you, George, that most of my former colleagues up on the Hill, they agree privately with everything I'm saying But then publicly. how do you explain why they because stand they're afraid. behind him so strong? Because they're scared to death. George, this is not about issues. I, I, I would not be even thinking about primary in this president if I was upset with his position on the debt or the deficit. There actually is another challenger to President Trump, as you know from inside the party, William Weld. And he had a tweet uh, this week where he said this. He said, Donald Trump is a clear and present danger to our country, to the globe, and to himself. And this is what got everybody's attention. Hashtag America deserves better. Hashtag 25th Amendment. You talk about the president being unfit. Should the 25th Amendment be invoked? It should be looked at. George, we've never had a situation like this. You can't believe a word he says. And again, I don't care your politics, that should concern you. He's nuts, he's erratic, he's cruel, he stokes bigotry, he, um, he's incompetent, he doesn't know what he's doing. George, he's a narcissist. Everything he cares about, the only thing he cares about is Trump. He doesn't give a damn about America. He doesn't care about the border. You and I talked before I came on air. He lost me for certain at Helsinki. When, when the, the president- conference with Putin. Yeah, when the president of the United States stood in front of the world and said, I stand with that guy and not my own people. Uh, that's disloyal. That's un-American. Um, his supporters, I think, are tired of this. Our campaign slogan, George, is be brave. Be brave. Uh, this is not a difficult thing for me to do. I'm opening up my life. But the bet that my campaign is making, and I'm going to pound Trump every single day, he's a bully and he's a coward and somebody has to call him out. And I cannot believe nobody in our party is calling him out. But the bet, George, of my campaign is that there are a lot of Republicans who feel like I do. They're afraid to come forward. You said you want to make uh, the case against the president. The case, the question is, are you the best messenger? You said you want to make a moral case against the president. Here's what the Washington Examiner, conservative mm -hmm. uh, newspaper, said in response to your can potential candidacy this week. There is the matter of his history of being Trumpier than Trump. He's made a living on peddling the same sort of demagoguery, conspiracy mongering, and right-wing bomb throwing for which he now condemns the president. Your response? I helped create Trump. And George, that's not an easy thing to say. I, uh, look, we were divided before Trump. I went to Washington eight years ago. The part of the Tea Party class wanted to, to shake Washington up. I got involved in the battles. And there were plenty of times where I went beyond the policy and the idea differences. And I got personal and I got hateful. I said some ugly things about President Obama that I regret. And, and it's difficult, but I think I think that helped create Trump, um, and I feel responsible you, for that. You did provide aid and comfort for the kinds of things he was saying. You yes. mentioned Obama. You called President Obama Muslim, an enemy, a traitor, and you often spoke out 
on racial themes. I want to show a couple of <clears throat> tweets that you had uh, right there. Number one, we lowered the bar for Obama. He was held to a lower, lower standard because he was black. That was just in 2017. And then a few months after that, not just President Obama, Senator Kamala Harris said something really dumb. Meh. If you're black and a woman, you can say dumb things. Lowered the bar. That is kind of textbook racism and sexism. Well, again, uh, the beauty of what President Trump has done is, George, he's made me reflect on some of the things I've said in the past. I had strong policy disagreements with Barack Obama, and too often I let those policy disagreements get personal. Did you really believe he, he's a Muslim? God, no, and I've apologized for that. And that's not an easy thing to do, not at all. But think about the contrast, George. Again, I'm burying my soul with you right now on national TV. We have a guy in the White House who's never apologized for anything he's done or said. I, I think it's a weakness not to apologize. I've, I, helped, I helped create Trump. There's no doubt about that. The personal, ugly politics. I regret that, and I'm sorry for that. And now we've got a guy in the White House, George. That's all he does. Uh, understand, I, I, I walk around with this piece of paper every day, George. It's got all of Trump's lies on one side, mostly updated, and then everything that he does that's wrong. I feel responsible for this, but I'm a conservative, and I think there's a decent chance to present to Republican voters a conservative... What is, the, no, what, the is the, what is the conservative case? Set aside the, the personal differences you have yeah. with President Trump. What is the conservative case for why President Trump should be replaced? He's incompetent. He has no freaking clue what he's doing. He ran it. He said he was going to build a wall, George. We haven't built, built a foot of the wall. He said Mexico was going to pay for it. We haven't. He told us trade wars were easy. Tell that to American farmers right now. Tell that to American consumers. President Trump said, I will eliminate the debt in eight years. He's increased it faster than Barack Obama With did. With the help of a Republican Senate. Exactly. And a Republican House. Republicans and Democrats, neither one give a damn about the debt and the deficits, but this is on Trump. He said, I'll eliminate the debt. He hasn't governed as a conservative. He's not competent. He doesn't know what he's doing. But, George, the bigger case is this. He's not capable of being decent. Oh, boy. Where do I begin with this one? All right, so first, some facts about uh, Joe Walsh. He actually is the most Trumpian congressperson in modern American history. He was the biggest bomb thrower of the Tea Party era. So it's hilarious that he's the one who thinks, like, I got to fight back against this wave of Trumpism, bro. I'm the leader of... A more kinder, gentler conservatism. It's like, I couldn't have thought of a worse person to try that. Um, the other thing is, I mean, you want to talk about his history. Oh, my God. I mean, this is a guy who tweeted on Election Day, I voted for Trump. If Trump doesn't win, I grab my musket. And everybody was like, what does that mean, bro? Are you saying that, like, if Hillary ends up in the White House, you would literally try to do an armed revolution? Because that's what you're saying. <laughs> he also got pranked by Sasha Baron Cohen into um, doing this segment where he he calls for the arming of kindergartners in order to prevent mass shootings. Listen, if you have any brain cells in your head, when you're told to support ar the arming of kindergartners, you go, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard and I'm not going to do it. He didn't say that. He came out in favor of it. During the Tea Party era... He would do these town halls, and in, in one of the town halls, you had somebody asking a question, blaming Wall Street for the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession, blaming the banks. And he said, I'm tired of hearing this crap that is the bank's fault. This is who we're talking about? And then, of course, there's the, you know, endless tweets of Donald Trump being, or excuse me, uh, Barack Obama being uh, Muslim, Kenyan, hardcore birther, I mean... And you saw those tweets were from 2017 that, oh, the re it's because he's black. Everything, he gets everything because he's black. Like, what the fuck? Um, so it's just, I mean, he, the guy is Donald Trump before Donald Trump became Donald Trump on the political scene. Full stop. Now, 
There's a lot of stuff he says it's just not true. He says, like, nobody stepped up on the Republican side. Bill Weld stepped up. What are you talking about? You're, like, these are all little hints. And the hint sh should be, it, this has nothing to do with what he's telling you it's about. Because he's just, he, he's saying things that are just provably wrong. Um, he said, everybody in the GOP believes he's unfit. No, as uh, George Stephanopoulos pointed out, he has over 80, an 80% 80 approval rating in his own party. In some polls, over a 90% approval rating in his own party. Trump is more popular with his own party than any president has ever been with their respective party. Think about that. In that scenario, a primary is not going to work by any stretch of the imagination. All you're going to do is embarrass yourself here. And then he he said, well, this is not about the issues. Oh, okay. See, he's, that that's a little nugget of truth in in his long-winded, self-aggrandizing speech here. Um, and when he's asked policy specifics, hey man, really, what's the conservative case against Trump? Like, what, what are you going to run on? What does he say? I'll sh tell you the issues right now. I jotted them down. He said, he hasn't built a foot of the wall. See, what did I tell you? He is Trump before Trump was Trump. <laughs> so his, his argument isn't, hey man, a wall's a really stupid idea and possibly an immoral idea. His argument is, Man, I, you know, I would have already started building the wall, and he hasn't. Um, he says, well, Trump is incompetent. Incompetent is a very peculiar, you know, argument against Trump. I would argue, you know, immoral, unethical, wrong on policy. He says incompetent. So what that means is, I kind of agree with the, that agenda. He's just not effective in getting it in place. That's what the word incompetent means. And then the other things he disagrees with them on is he said trade. I, I told you guys from day one, I told you guys. Any even minor little bit of protectionism that Donald Trump does, the argument, not just from the Republicans, but also the corporate Democrats is going to be, Oh, we're a free trade nation. Stop it. We need unfettered free trade. So in other words, they use Trump's shitty version of protectionism because it's really dumb in how it's carried out to swing the pendulum too far in the other direction to say, everybody shut up and let the corporations take control and let them craft whatever trade deals they want. And even though it'll screw American workers, I don't give a shit because protectionism bad, so totally unfettered free trade good. So, like, you think Joe Walsh is a guy who is against TPP? No, he's for TPP. So when he goes after Trump on trade, that's him saying... I'm going to go a way further right than Trump. Now, again, the way Trump has done his protectionism is terrible and it hasn't worked. But he's saying throw out the whole concept and let's be in favor of totally unfettered free trade. So, again, him objecting to Trump here from a shittier right-wing perspective. Then, finally, what does he bring up? The debt and the deficit. This was nominally one of the things he said during the Tea Party wave as to why he wants to get elected. Oh, I want to fix the debt and the deficit. How does Joe Walsh want to fix the debt and the deficit? Well, how do all the Republicans want to fix the debt and the deficit? They want to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. That's what they want to do. That's what they say. So his, his pitch against Trump is he hasn't uh, built a foot of the wall. I, Joe Walsh, will. He's incompetent, not unethical and immoral, incompetent. Um, I don't agree with him on trade, and I'd be more in favor of free trade. And the debt and the deficit, oh my God, it skyrocketed under Trump, and I want to reduce it massively. So, mix that in with the head fake for the media, which the media will eat up nonstop. The head fake is, this president is not a decent person. He's not a decent person. I'm against being indecent. Thank you, Joe. Oh, what a hero. You're against being indecent. Uh, he does go on to call him a bigot. He, so, he's doing all the head fakes that the media loves. Oh my god, he's a child. Oh my god, he's he's a bad person. Oh my god, he's indecent. Oh my god, he's mentally unfit. He's incompetent. He does all those things that the media just... <coughs> eats up all day. And then the bait and switch is... I'd be a good replacement, and I want to be more Trumpian than Trump. I want to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. I want to build the wall. I want to do more unfettered free trade. Do TPP on steroids. So this is this is his disagreement. And now the final point is, what's going on here? Is he just totally and utterly delusional? 
Or is there another angle? Well, it's probably a little bit of both. He's definitely delusional in the sense that he might not think he's going to totally embarrass himself here, but he is. Trump would curb stomp this guy 17 ways to Sunday. But also, there's a little bit of a Glenn Beck-like project here. Now, when I say that, what do I mean? Remember when Glenn Beck in 2016 did the whole, oh, Trump is beyond the pale tap dance? Um, now, I warned, and every virtually every left-wing commentator and new media warned, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. It's a head fake. And what does Samantha Bee do? Rehabilitates Glenn Beck. What does, like, New York Magazine do? Rehabilitates Glenn Beck. And they say, oh, he said terrible things in the past about Obama and about Democrats and about the left. But now he's anti-Trump, so we can work together. <laughs> and then what happens? Fast forward, like, seven and a half minutes, and he comes out in favor of Donald Trump because he says, oh, the Democrats are so bad and wrong. So, think about that. All of mainstream media and some goofy liberal comedians like Samantha Bee rehabilitate this guy and say he's nominally anti-Trump, so he's a good guy, yeah! And then he immediately flips on them. Of course, of course that was what he was going to do. So what's Joe Walsh doing here? Nominally being anti-Trump, saying things like, Oh, his temperament is really bad. Boy, I don't like the mean tweets, even though I agree totally with the policy agenda and would go further right wing. The media is going to eat that up, and then the idea is... Let me rehabilitate my flailing career and make it so that perhaps I can get on one of these mainstream media networks. That could be part of the long game here. Because he's not going to win the election. He's delusional, but he, he probably even recognizes, I'm not going to win this election. What, are you crazy? So the idea is, let me rehabilitate my image enough, because his image is super toxic and is incredibly Trumpian. Let me rehabilitate my image enough where they'll let me back into the respectable circles in mainstream media and then because listen the the never trump conservative is a demographic that is massively overrepresented in mainstream media across the board print media tv because that's exactly what these establishment liberals want out of conservatives they want somebody who's still reps that right-wing ideology in favor of tax cuts and deregulation and endless war and stuff, but they don't want the crassness that's associated with Trump. So the idea is, oh, bring back the reasonable conservative! Bring them back! And that's the Joe Walsh's. That was, was the Glenn Beck's. That's the Bill Crystal's, the guy who's a goddamn war criminal. But they say, oh, he's a reasonable man who we just happen to disagree with. He doesn't curse on Twitter, so he must be a good person. So that's the thing, is they want... They want to have this bipartisan establishment circle jerk, but in order to get into that club and get on TV, you have to be a never Trump conservative. You have to agree, Trump is bad, but uh, let me espouse my own toxic right-wing ideology that you don't think is toxic because I'm saying it in a polite way as I wear a suit and tie. So that could be the long game here. It's possible he's delusional enough to think that he'll do well, but I doubt it. I think it's more likely he knows this is a doomed vanity project, a self-aggrandizement project, but it's to rehabilitate his image. See, Joe Walsh has been doing talk radio since he's out of Congress, and nobody's listening to his bullshit. Nobody cares. Joe Walsh. Who's listening to the Joe Walsh show? Answer. No one. So he's out there, uh, you know, on the sidelines of politics when he used to be a congressperson. He's out there on the sidelines of politics screaming into the wind, and he wants relevance. How do you gain relevance? I don't know. I'll run for president, pretend I'm massively anti-Trump, be the never reasonable, never-Trump conservative, even though I'm not reasonable, and then mainstream media will welcome me back with open arms. And by the way, prediction, they're going to fall for it. How's that for a prediction? They will 100% fall for it. How do I know it? Um, they're doing it right now with Scaramucci. Sean Spicer, just, which sounds like a porn name, by the way, along with Tap Jaker, um, but he's on Dancing with the Stars now. What happened? I thought, oh my god, this administration is terrible and evil and immoral and wrong, and that's why we're going to rehabilitate all the criminals who were part of his administration. What? What? So he did it with Sean Spicer. They're doing it with, um, with Anthony Scaramucci as we speak. He's being invited on fucking cable news every single day. We all know he's just an anti-Trump narcissistic grifter. We all know, like, this is the same shit they did. They propped up Avenatti. Oh, he said mean words about Donald Trump. He's got to be a good person. Oh, my God. He's up on 976 crimes. What? What? What happened? I don't understand. By the way, I tweeted the other day about this. I said, good to see the media learn the lesson of Avenatti, and they're no, no longer going to prop up, you know, these 
um, charlatan con men grifters. And then I showed the screenshot of Scaramucci on with um, with Joanne Reed. And uh, Avenatti, without a question, is searching his name on Twitter daily because he responded to that tweet. <laughs> Dude, you're so sad. You're the saddest person. Ever. You're looking up your own name in Twitter just to look at people who are criticizing you to respond to it. Oh, that's so pathetic. It's so wonderfully pathetic. But um, that's what the media does. They rehabilitate these idiots. And that's what they're going to do with Joe Walsh because he's running for president against Trump and he's calling Trump mean names. So even though his ideology is the same or even worse, doesn't matter. He's now allowed back in the respectable circles. So that's probably what he's angling for here. And, um, you know, it's funny because, again, he keeps repeating as he's talking here. It's a shame nobody stepped up in the Republican Party. What do you mean? Bill Well Dill did step up. He's been running for months. It's a shame nobody stepped up. No, but he did. And you know he did. So why are you saying nobody stepped up? Because it's all about, we've talked about this in the context of Bet on My Stork. The gloriousness of me. Yeah. Me. Yeah. It's n nonsense self aggrandizement. On some level, he's super jealous of Trump. Because he thinks, I was Trump before Trump was Trump. And this guy comes in there and gets elected president? What the hell, man? So now he's got to find a new angle. Because now he can't out-Trump Trump. So the angle is, oh, Trump bad, but right on all the policy. And I'll go even further on that stuff. But Trump bad. Media, love me. Love me. Oh, you do? Wonderful. What a broken media ecosystem. Imagine, like, in a world that made sense, this dude would announce his primary and nobody would even pay attention to him. <laughs> The media be like, you know, we're done. We're not, no, get out of here. We're not going to fucking interview you. We, we see your angle. We know what you're doing, but no. <laughs> so there you go. Um, this will be funny to watch. Joel Walsh just trying to get his face on TV 24-7. We've seen this movie play out before.